Hello everyone, my name is Dave, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple RPG shooter game using C++ and OpenGL. You control a unit that shoots projectiles and gets experience points. When these projectiles destroy the destructible orange squares or enemy units, your unit then gets automatically upgraded so that it's bigger and shoots faster. If it gets hit by too many enemy projectiles, then the game turns red and stops. There aren't any images in this game. Everything is drawn solely with OpenGL shaders. So how do the graphics work? I made a previous video that goes into great detail on this. However, there are some changes for this project that I'll discuss. The overall idea is to define a rectangle that represents the position and size of the shape that needs to be drawn. For example, a rectangle. OpenGL uses normalized device coordinates, meaning that the origin is in the center of the window and the bottom left corner is at x equals minus 1.0, y equals minus 1.0, and the top right corner is x equals 1.0, y equals 1.0. We can create two triangles that form a rectangle together. That is the size of the window. Given that shapes will need to be rotated, it makes most sense to center it at the origin. Note that in the previous video, the rectangle's upper left corner was at the origin, because the upper left corner has been chosen to define its position. However, for the math to work out, it needs to be rotated around the origin first, then moved later. Start by scaling this OpenGL rectangle by the pixel dimensions that need to be drawn, then rotate it around its center, and scale it by the width and height of the window in pixels, so that it has the correct width and height in OpenGL's coordinate system. After that, it's moved to the upper left corner of the window, offset by its desired upper left position, and finally offset by half its width and height to ensure that its position is defined by its upper left coordinate rather than its center. The code for this is contained in the vertex shader and can be seen in front of you. Feel free to pause the video and take a closer look if you want to. Also note that when the buffers that store the OpenGL rectangle's vertex information are set up, their coordinates matches the OpenGL window. In the previous video, they were offset so that the top left coordinate was at the origin. Also for reference, here's the fragment shader. Given that I discussed it in the previous video about how to draw shapes with OpenGL, I won't explain how it works here. In terms of drawing shapes, the focus of this video is to show how to draw multiple simple shapes to create units, projectiles, etc. You'll notice that they're relatively simple overall. For example, for the player, there are a few colored circles and a few colored rectangles. How it works is that there's a base class called Sprite, which the units, projectile, etc. inherit from. It has a function called drawBody that draws either a circle or a square at the sprite's position, size, angle, etc. Another class called Unit inherits Sprite and has a similar function called draw turret. It draws a rectangle that's offset towards the front of the unit so that it only appears on the one side and rotates with it correctly. The unit player class inherits unit and has a draw and draw shadow function. They call the draw turret and draw body functions with the correct offsets and colors. Note that the draw function calls each function twice to draw both the inner and outer parts. This is because they are different colors, while the shadow is a single color. Unit enemy is drawn in the same way, but with different colors. The projectile is drawn in a similar way, but without a turret, and its color depends on if it was shot by the player or enemy unit. The destructible is even simpler because it has just one color. The game has a background color that's light, which represents where the player can move. The level has a fixed size, and if the player moves towards the edge, the parts that don't exist are drawn with a darker color that's the same size as the shadows in the game. So how does it work? Well, in the game class's draw function, the first step is to clear the screen with the color that represents area that's not part of the level. The next step is to draw a rectangle that represents the area of the world that exists. Start by determining the positions of the sides of the camera in pixels, 
as the camera moves around. So this is the left, top, right, and bottom. Note that they're all in pixels. Next, determine the positions of the world in pixels, but without influence from the camera because these positions aren't moving around. Next, determine the offset from the sides of the camera to the sides of the world in pixels. The idea behind this is that if the edge of a side of the camera is outside the world, determine the distance from that edge to the edge of the world. If, for example, the camera is far from the edges of the world, all of these values will be zero, otherwise they will be non-zero. The rectangle that represents the area to be drawn would fill the entire window by default if the offsets are all zero. Otherwise, they're essentially subtracted from this. Finally, draw the rectangle on the screen. Let's look at how the code for the gameplay works. The overall idea is that there's mouse and keyboard input for the player that calls some functions that it has for movement and to shoot projectiles. The update function, the player class, handles its movement. The idea is that if it needs to move, direction X or direction Y will have been set to non-zero values when the player pressed the appropriate keys on the keyboard. These are used to create a vector called add that has the correct dimensions and magnitude for the distance to move in the current frame. It's then added to the position. The position is then adjusted to ensure that it's within bounds of the world. Note that it has to stay away from the edge by a distance called offset from edge. The angle is set by subtracting the player's position from the position that it needs to point towards and calculating the angle of that vector. Finally, reset the variables for movement. To shoot, it calls a function from the unit class called shoot projectile. The unit class's shoot projectile function starts by ensuring that the weapon is ready to shoot. Then, it creates and adds a projectile to the game's list projectiles at the unit's position offset slightly in the direction of its turret. The projectile's update function starts by ensuring that it hasn't already collided with anything. Then it moves the projectile forward and checks if it needs to be removed from the game. This could occur either because it's moved beyond the maximum distance that it can travel or if a collision has occurred. Determining if a collision has occurred is done by calling the check collisions function. It starts by checking if it was shot by the player or not. If so, then loop through all the enemy units and destructible squares in the game. If there is overlap, remove health and the required experience points from the player. Set collision occurred to true and return so that this projectile can't collide with anything else. Otherwise, if it was shot by an enemy unit, then check if a collision has occurred with the player. If so, then remove the required amount of health from the player and set collision occurred to true and return so that this projectile can't collide with anything else. The code for the enemy is pretty simple. It checks if the player is within weapons range, then rotates towards it and shoots when it's pointing at it. Let's also take a look at how the player's experience system works. As you recently saw, the player's add experience function is called from the projectile class when a collision has occurred. It starts by adding the input amount of experience to a variable called experience sum to track the total amount of experience collected towards the level. It then checks if it's above the amount required for the next level, and its level isn't too high. If so, then it subtracts the amount of experience required. Note that it doesn't just set it to zero because experience sum could be greater than the amount required for the level, and if it was set to zero, this additional experience would disappear. Finally, modify the player's stats given its new level. To do this, Ensure that the level is greater than zero. Set the experience required for the next level based on the current level. Increase the speed of the weapon and increase the size of the player as well. The final result for the game is shown in front of you. As you can see, the player moves around, shoots projectiles, gets experience points by destroying the destructible orange squares or enemy units, which automatically upgrades it so that it's bigger and shoots faster. If it gets hit by too many enemy projectiles, then the game turns red and stops. Well, 
That's it for this video. All the source code is available on my website. Link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.